This episode of HD Nation is brought to you by Squarespace. Time to get our HD Nation on. Speaking of which, if you live on the YouTube, please subscribe to the Tech HD channel. Now let us talk potatoes. Yeah, one of my favorite pieces of home theater PC software has turned 1.0 finally. One remote potato for iOS, uh, the Apple, obviously the iPhone OS, from a group called Fat Attitude. I love that company name. Uh, the newly minted 1.0 is available for the iPod Touch and iPhone, and it costs seven bucks. It used to be free, but that was before they added the most important new update. Well, bum, bum, bum. the complete new interface. They updated the entire interface, but the big news is that Remote Potato now streams recorded TV shows from Windows 7 Media Center Ooh. to your iPhone or iPod Touch. It'll stream your music and picture collections too, but uh, no, let's just go right so to the video. So it's like Orb, but Kind of, <laughs> but let's see it in action. So I bring up the program, and this is the main interface, which shows basically, well, it defaults to the TV guide. It'll also show me my recordings as well as music and pictures that I might have stored on my system at home. Now, this is my, this is that home theater PC I was showing off last week, uh, running at home right now, streaming that content, transcoding it, and bringing it right to here. So for those who were not familiar with your previous coverage of your love of the potato, yes. is it primarily a remote control for Windows Media Center or other home theater devices or for setting up sort of your recording for Windows Media Center television? Mm -hmm. The latter. It, okay. it basically controls the content that's being recorded through basically my cable connection to Windows Media Center. It allows me to schedule that recording. Uh, to see what's there, I can delete it. Say I'm away from the house and I said, oh, I forgot to record something. I can just go right on my phone, boop, 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 say record that. And what wasn't available before was the transcoding functionality. Mm -hmm. They've been working on it hard for the last few months and finally it released as a paid application. Nevertheless, at least it's available now. And I will just say, you know what, I've got the list of TV recordings here and it just shows in order and you know what, it makes it really easy to, to, to uh, edit my playlist at home too. So if I've already watched something, it's really easy just to swipe your finger on this interface and say, go away, I'm done with you, delete, or whatever. But uh, let me just bring up something real quick. Like, megabytes of, 400 gigabytes of NASCAR can be swiped away to make room for next week's. Or the NFL playoff games, like in this <laughs> case, uh, I was away from home. One nice thing I've noticed too about the software, it determines the quality of the stream based mm -hmm. upon your connection. So if you're using 3G, it will only give you up to normal quality. But if you're on Wi-Fi like we are now, it goes all up to something called top quality, which looks delicious on Does here. Does it do is, that automatically? Uh, it lets you select. Okay. But it will automatically restrict your choices by the connection. So oh, cool. if you're on Wi-Fi, it'll give you options for doing everything. If you're on, say, 3G or less, it will only give you the mid-grade or lower. So this is a pretty slick roll your own way without having to use Orb or some other third party to have all the content in your, on your, your Windows Media Center PC available anywhere you go. Can you, can you use the regular sort of media collection that's stashed or just the television? You totally, recorded? you can actually, your recorded content that's on there, it can all be transcoded and fed to this device. Pretty seamlessly. It, it is 1.0 software in a sense, and it does have a couple of issues that I would like to see addressed sooner than later. One would be that navigating the channel listings, especially if you want to just look at only HD content, it's a little cumbersome. Right. Uh, you basically are scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. <laughs> there might be a way to directly get to the channel there group really I'm are looking 500 for. 500 channels on my Comcast. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, it does take a second or two for the video to kick <laughs> in, but there was a recent NFC game, wow. and that's, that's not the highest quality it can go, but I'm not exporting that out of that device. That's so. still pretty good looking. I'd say also on the downsides too, it, it occasionally would fail to start the playback or it's slow to get going. That took about probably 30 seconds to get, get running along. Mm -hmm. And looking at the CPU usage on my computer at home, right. running that new i3 uh, Sandy Bridge based home theater PC, it was running about 50% as far as CPU usage. So it's definitely not being fully optimized for acceleration in terms of doing the transcoding. Right. And I hope the coders over at Fat Attitude are able to accelerate that and get that, get that accelerated to you know GPU and new CPU tech like Sandy Bridge as well. But So I smell a thumbs up. I, I, so far, <laughs> I'm sorry that it costs seven bucks. That's one of the more expensive apps I've ever right. purchased. Uh, but I, I didn't hesitate on buying it. So. If, if you do have the Windows Media Center set up and you have a lot of video pictures and music you would like to just stream. Access on the road. And you're not gonna chew up your data plan doing it, which gives you the option over Wi-Fi, I give it a big thumbs up. There's nothing else like it right now. No. And I like that. He likes that. Yeah. It makes him happy. And Jay from Alabama writes in, 
Dear HD Nation crew, during many of the movies that I watch repeatedly, I notice a difference in the way I hear the dialogue depending on how off-axis I am from direct center. Obviously, it sounds best when I'm sitting at zero degrees, but I lost some of the high range as I shift to the left or right. After doing a lot of research, I found that the mid-high, mid-format of most center channels would cause a vertical axis of uniformity, explaining why it changes as I got off axis. I thought about getting myself a nice bookshelf to run as a center or even running two bookshelves in series to shift back to a horizontal axis. What suggestion would you make? Is running a bookshelf or two in series going to, make, uh, going to net a better performance off axis than a traditional center, or should I just always claim the center seat? Uh, that I understand. Thanks, sign J from Alabama. Yeah, well, okay, on some level, right, you always want to claim the center seat, right? Center, dead center, eyes in the middle of your HDTV screen. That's the easiest way to focus the audio best. It's a one seat. Right. But there are some newer technologies, like your Odyssey uh, yeah, my, 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 audio setup on your receiver. My almost bottom-of-the-line Denon amplifier came with Odyssey's multi-EQ built in, which did a pretty fantastic job of tuning. You know, you put a mic here, you hit a button, you put a mic here, you hit a button, you put a mic here, you hit a button, the mic comes with the, the $350 receiver, and it sort of opens up the sound stage to so that nobody's sort of, you know, kind of like, why is everything over there when they're sitting on one end of the couch? I Rather mean, than a single-point setup where yeah. it would really focus on probably the best seat in the house, rather right. than, you know, you can expand that sound field out a little bit better for yeah. the other viewers in the room. There is a reason why everybody fights for that particular seat when they're watching opera or, or, or the orchestra, right? I also got to ask, though, is it all content? Is, is, is it all sort of like heavy dialogue, heavy sort of period costume dramas where everything's dialogue shoved on the center channel? Because most action movies, a lot of what's going on is on the left and right channel. I'm also really curious what center channel you're using. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of people on the internet that have been like, yes, there's a definite vertical access bias in traditional home theater center channel designs, but the reality is, is most center channels are designed to work with your left and right channel and create a big old fat sound stage. So if you haven't tuned your surround sound system, you know, by basically adjusting your speakers and seeing how wide you can kind of make the sound stage, you know, maybe you need to back the center channel away from the seat in front of the TV. Um, you know, you might also actually try turning the center channel vertically. If you find you've got one big sort of point of sound in the middle of the center channel, maybe turning it horizontally will open it up. It might sound worse. Um, also, the higher the frequencies, the more directional they are. If you've kind of got the treble amped up a little bit because you like your reggae or you like your jazz, you might want to turn the treble down a little bit. And you might find out it sort of broadens out that center channel. Um, or just try a different center channel. If there's a decent audio store near you, see if you can demo, you know, grab your favorite Blu-ray disc that, that is the one where you're like, oh my goodness, I, I, there's a six inch spot I have to sit in to hear the, everything right. Um, and try demoing a few different brands of speakers with you know, your favorite scene and see if you have the same problem. If you don't have the same problem, I'm thinking it's time to upgrade your speakers. There's part of me that's like, yeah, throw a couple of bookshelf speakers in series and see how much you can stress the center channel on your amp. But I don't think it's going to help, dude. And also, a lot of times, then you'll find out you have this huge center channel for these mismatched speakers that don't match your left and right and your surrounds. So I would, yeah, you've got the laughter face on. I, I, I agree with everything you said so far. I think it's good advice. And it, it, keep in mind, too, that, like you said, high frequency audio is very directional, it tends right. to be very directional. So sometimes, Tilting the speaker just on its side, or or writing it if it is mm -hmm. on its side, can make a world of difference in terms of how it's spraying that sound out. Yeah, there's a, there's a really sort of this serious. They were inexpensive but very popular audio field speakers, NHT. I want to say ones or zeros, a long time ago. And one of the big hacks for them was turning them upside down because then it kind of brought the tweeter into better. It's uh, yeah. I, I, I have a pretty fortunate I don't want to get my, audio my, file my center on. channel literally sits on the top edge of my TV. Right. And it's fairly small, but the side speakers are, I have them on stands, and they're just the right height to where they almost match the edges of the TV. Mm -hmm. So the, to, as far as the screen and speaker placement go, I end up with a really nice solution. Well, solution. Yeah. There's your favorite word. But <laughs> well, just the, the problem that's... is, though, is like ideally your center channel should be behind the HD TV, which is really hard to do. In movie theaters, there's a reason there's a thousand tiny holes in that Acoustically screen. Acoustically transparent screens. Exactly, because they mount actual center channels behind that screen. A in lot the of speakers behind the screen. A lot of speakers. Sounds good. <laughs> hey, now it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of January 25th, 2011. First up, A Beautiful Mind. This Ron Howard-directed 2001 film tells the real-life story of Nobel laureate John Nash Jr., played by Russell Crowe. 
A mathematical genius in the 50s, Nash quickly fell victim to delusions as a result of his schizophrenia. This film also stars Jennifer Connelly and won four Academy Awards, including Best Picture in 2002. It's an incredible, heart-wrenching story about a man falling into madness and then slowly crawling back out. The Blu-ray includes seven short featurettes, all between five and ten minutes long, plus a 22-minute making-of documentary. Next up, Enter the Void. This is a movie from a French director, set in Tokyo, featuring American characters. It is in English, and it tells the story of a drug dealer who dies and comes back as a ghost to watch over his sister. It's a love it or hate it kind of movie, mostly due to the visuals, which, as you can see by the trailer, can be a bit overwhelming. They'll either blow you away or make you sick. From the very beginning, starting with the opening credits, which you're watching now, it doesn't hold back. It premiered in Cannes, also played at Sundance, and Quentin Tarantino listed it among his top 20 of 2010. Also released this week, 2010's Red, starring Bruce Willis, Morgan Freeman, John Malkovich, and Helen Mirren. Bruce Willis is an ex-CIA agent and, quote, retired, extremely dangerous, hence the title. It's part comedy, part action, but frankly, the best action sequences are in the trailer. It's being released in two versions, movie only and a special edition. The latter includes a few special featurettes, like nine minutes of deleted and extended scenes, and a full-length picture-in-picture track filled with trivia, interviews, behind-the-scenes footage, commentary on real-life CIA procedures, and more. So while it's not the best action movie out there, if you want to see Helen Mirren wielding a machine gun, and who doesn't, this is definitely worth a watch. Other releases include the Criterion Collection's broadcast news, Client 9, The Rise and Fall of Elliot Spitzer, The Color Purple, Dead Space Aftermath, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Freakonomics, the movie, The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest, Malcolm X, Nowhere Boy, Open Season 3, Quiet Days in Clichy, Raw, The Best of 2010, Red Hill, Santa Sangre, Saw the Final Chapter, Saw the Final Chapter in 3D, Secretariat, Smackdown, The Best of 2010, and White Wedding. It's time to thank one of our sponsors, Squarespace. Squarespace offers users a flexible solution for anyone looking to create a blog, personal portfolio, or any kind of website. No matter what level of coding experience you have, Squarespace can provide the tools needed to create a high-end, complex website that is uniquely your own. Don't worry if you come across any questions or issues, Squarespace also offers every user 24-7 support. Squarespace just pushed a brand new social widget for geolocation services. Display your most recent check-ins from Foursquare, Gowalla, and Facebook places on a live Google map. Squarespace is the only web publishing platform with a native built-in solution for displaying your check-in data. The widget is totally customizable and fully integrated with the Squarespace style editor. Squarespace's iPhone app lets you publish your blog on the go and comment moderation. Get push notifications to approve new comments, mark existing comments as spam, reply to comments, and more, all from your iPhone. Many of the Internet's highest trafficked web pages are powered by Squarespace, not to mention many of the personal pages of Revision 3 hosts and personalities. Go to www.squarespace.com to learn more. Be sure to enter the code TECHZILLA when checking out to earn 10% off the lifetime of your order.